Hi guys, I am Isha. Welcome back to my channel. In my today's video, I am going to talk about the top 10 reasons why you should move to Darwin. This is one of the favorite questions that usually people ask me in my inbox, in my, on my Instagram specifically. So today I am with top 10 reasons. You know, I've written all these points for you here. Before starting with today's video, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, you can do that. Also, one very small disclaimer that please do your own research before moving to Darwin. These videos are just good guides for you you can do your own research talk to people or do whatever you want to do please do not reply do not rely 100% on these videos all right like this video if you really appreciate my efforts so the first reason why i would suggest why i would love this small city darwin is that it is super small it is beautiful you know it is warm you are going to enjoy the calmness over here actually to be very honest this city is close to nature you will literally feel that yes you're living somewhere close to nature you are living in you know an adventurous place basically uh, when we talk about Darwin, Darwin is uh, like the Northern Territory is the home to around 1,50,000 people, which is quite less population when we compare to the other states of Australia. And like I mentioned that this is a tourist spot where you'll see amazing wildlife, you know, you will be able to see, uh, you'll, you'll have actually face to face encounters with crocodiles, different types of monkeys are there and turtles and what not. So if you have that, you know, you, if you love nature, if you love to be in nature, like around nature, then this this place could be for you and also if you love small cities you don't want any traffic or something like that then this city is for you all right and then as I mentioned that this is a small city so you will actually have a relaxed lifestyle you won't have to bother much about you know that stress which is actually there in big metropolitan huge cities which you won't encounter over here okay let's move ahead and also just just want to add one more thing that do not feel that you will get isolated over here there is no isolation you will i literally i get to see people from every country over here on daily basis there is not like i i, I never felt that people from this community are not here it is diverse it is multicultural every community is over here so you won't feel isolated for sure all right let's move ahead the second thing is that you're gonna save your time you're gonna save your energy you're gonna save your petrol now the reason behind that is whenever you know even if you have to go to your uni you have to go for your work it is never gonna be more than 20 minutes 20 minutes is like the max which i'm actually talking about if you're in darwin everything like i go to my school it is just at five minutes distance i live in darwin uh, darwin cbd which is the city area but it, my school is just at five minutes and uh, i have seen people who just commute for 10 minutes and 15 minutes whereas if i compare it to sydney or maybe to melbourne i have seen my friends who commute actually for one hour to go to their work you know and that much of time that means in darwin being a small city being a relaxed city you are going to save your time and of course save your petrol as well so Talking about the modes of transport, people usually here they prefer cars because there are no trains like I mentioned, no trains, no trams because it is a small city and then buses are usually not used by most of the people due to several reasons and then like I mentioned small city so no traffic, no stress and you will be able to reach at wherever you want to go. No rush. So even if in Darwin if you say that you reach somewhere late that means that you were not punctual. So the reaching late is not an option here in Darwin and no traffic. All right. And then uh, the third thing, which can be, you know, an advantageous things for, thing for girls, but I should not gender specify it, actually. It is that the driving is super easy over here. I, I, I drove a car in Sydney and I drove a car in Darwin. To compare both of them, driving in Sydney is too much of pressure, too much of traffic and too much of traffic rules. Of course, the traffic rules remain the same. but you will get to see huge roads over here but in da but in sydney there are like you know the roads are not the same so you, you and it is commonly said that even if you do not know how to drive you will learn how to drive or it will be easy for you to actually drive in darwin because of the multiple factors so uh, yeah like multiple factors includes of course there is enough space less traffic you know and less traffic rules and all that stuff so even if you're a beginner, you will be able to drive here. That, that's again, uh, that's again an advantage that if you're planning to move to Darwin and you know, when you're driving in Sydney, you need to be hundred percent vigilant. And when we drive in Sydney, when we drive in Darwin, we can be okay with it. You know, it's like relaxed to be very honest. Okay. Let's move ahead. 
Now talking about accommodations over here, of course, it is tough to find an accommodation here. But when we talk about the affordability, like I just mentioned that I live in uh, Darwin CBD, which is city. If, you know what, to be very honest and practical, if I if I'll even think of living in Sydney CBD, it is going to put a hole in my pocket, which is not there in Darwin. So basically there is an affordability. The prices, the rent is usually less, is in fact less in comparison to the other cities or the other big cities or the metropolitan cities like Sydney or Melbourne or whatever. So there is an affordability. Also, people over here, they are able to afford beach faced houses. Why they're able to afford beach facing houses just because they are inexpensive when we compare them to other big cities so living in cbd won't be a dream but it could be like a staple or it could be like a normal thing and anyone can actually afford it here in darwin it's not a big thing and of, and of course since you're living if there are a couple of advantages if you stay in cbd if uh, you know i can go to any, I can go to a beach, it is just at two minutes walk from my house. I can go to any club just at one minute walk from my house. I can go to Woolworth just at two minutes walk, Coles just at one minute walk. So all these distances, they actually get reduced. I do not use my car. I save petrol for that because I can walk, of course. So everything is easily accessible. Uh, again, an advantage. Now, talking about uh, international students, specifically about job opportunities while you are studying. You know, this is the fifth reason which I'm giving you, but uh, I have divided job opportunities into two parts. The first part is that while you are studying, that kind of job opportunities and after you will study that kind of job opportunities. So first, let's talk about while you are studying. See, the first thing is that the population is low. That means there are less number of students, which means if there are less number of students, that makes that means there are more opportunities. You will actually get, uh, and specifically, I've talked about this in my other videos as well, that the Darwin is divided into two seasons, dry season and wet season. There are lots and lots of opportunities, job opportunities, when we talk specifically about dry season, because this is you know a tourist area and people generally come over here and they require workforce to keep everything working. So you will find ample of job opportunities here as well especially in dry season and then like i mentioned that there are less people so more job opportunities you know jobs could be of any field it could be of electricians it could be of plumbers it could be of driver or whatever field and specifically i've seen people you know uh cleaners cleaners they are in great demand over here then security jobs they're again in great demand over here so you won't feel that you're not able to find job and one of the most you know you know one of the prominent reasons is that less people more opportunities okay now moving ahead that about the job opportunities after studying most of the CDU graduates, according to the surveys, most of the CDU graduates, they're able to find the jobs after their graduation. Now, let's talk about statistics and then, I get, then I'll talk about some of the practical aspects. When we talk about statistics, according to CDU, CDU is number second. It is it is ranked number two on Australia as an as an Australian university for graduate employment opportunities. And study area says that it is ranked number one uh, in Australia for the undergraduate employment outcomes in engineering, sciences, mathematics, psychology, and social work. Which means that all the graduates are able to grab jobs after you know the completion of their course. Now let's talk about reality. When we talk about reality, what I have heard since I'm still doing my graduation so I usually talk to people you know what is going to happen after I graduate so after you know every second person whom I come across here is having a government job in Darwin the reason behind that is of course less people usually come here more opportunities and they are able to grab jobs because of this myth that we do not want to move to Darwin there are a lot of vacancies which are actually vacant and people are able to get government jobs Every second person I meet, you know, whether it is a teacher or a nurse or whatever, there are ample number of government jobs which are available here in Darwin. So that's the reality. And now I'll give my own perspective. I personally feel that if you are a CDO graduate with relevant English skills, with relevant English skills, please mind that, you will never fail. You will definitely get a job in your field. You will definitely get what you actually want to have. And you will, maybe if you want to have a government job, you can grab that as well. It is all about you. It is all about your perspective that how you are working towards things and how planned you are. You need to be super planned with your things. Okay. 
uh, now talking about the next the seventh thing which is on my list uh, which is getting PR I will just quote this in one single line I won't elaborate it much getting PR is actually easy in Darwin when I compare Darwin when I compare Northern Territory to other metropolitan cities like Sydney Melbourne or whatever it is easy now why I'm saying that of course I need to add a couple of things to it but I feel that if I talk about that here it is gonna be a full-fledged long video so I am going to make a new video a complete video on this topic that why getting PR in Darwin is easy so stay tuned for that and if you haven't subscribed to my channel you can do it because come in my upcoming videos you will hear this from me for sure and I just wind it up by saying that you know uh, there are state nominations for skilled migrants and if your occupation is there in high demand then definitely no one can stop you but I will elaborate it in my further videos all right now talking about CDU, why there is a benefit, why there is a benefit when you actually study in CDU. I get a couple of inquiries on a daily basis that what is my experience as a student, as an international student basically in CDU. Uh, let me just wind it up. Basically there are less number of students in CDU. When I say that there are not less number of students in CDU, like less number of students in my class. What I mean by that is that if there are less number of students, that means that I am able to connect better. I am able to do my networking better with my friends, with my teachers, with my mentors, with my tutors or whomsoever or the staff. So now what is happening over here is that since I'm having good bonds with my teachers, with my professors, they know me because there are less number of students, they can give me more attention and that will further also help me in booming, in boosting my job opportunities because they will be there in future to reference for me. So practically having less number of students in a class is an advantageous thing because anyhow that is going to give you, that is going to help you in referencing, that is going to open your networking channels which is ultimately, which is actually a need of an hour for an international student because anyhow the networking, the referencing is going to work at the end to get the job in your particular field. So this is again my personal, uh, you know, my personal perspective and less students that like that, that that's again my what i have encountered is that i can talk to my you know professors anytime of course during business hours i can talk to them anytime if i need any help with my assignments they are there to help me out if i need to get my drafts done they are there to help me out of course if there will be a class of you know 150 students then how will my professors be able to give that much of attention and that much of priority to me so of course having less number of students is a big advantage for me specifically okay now the uh, last thing, not, not the last thing, the second last thing is that salary over here in certain jobs is comparatively more when we talk about other states. Like uh, I'll just give you one example. I was talking to other, one of my teachers, one of my colleagues um, back in my school and she told me that she is paid $2,000 to $2,500 more as she has moved from Perth to Darwin. And even, you know, like the school authorities actually helped her to uh, carry, you know, to tra in the transportation of her car and all whatever, her bed, her stuff, whatever, uh, you know, her basic things. So that is again a perk. She, she said that otherwise she would have paid $6,000 to actually get that done, but it was done free for her because she has actually moved here. So I've seen many people and you know, I've seen many people comparing their salaries. So the salaries over here are usually more uh, when we compare them to the big cities. Now, and then again, there are two differences. Darwin is a regional area, but when we talk about Catherine, when we talk about Alice Springs, they are remote areas. And the salary and the perks are even more when we talk about, you know, Catherine or Alice Springs or whatever. You get accommodation, you get free flights over there, and then you get, basically you get your electricity or water at subsidized rates. And then again, there is a hike in the salary as well if you move to these remote areas. And the last thing which I just want to say is that never feel that you will get bored in Darwin. Darwin has, Darwin has offered me lots of festivals, lots of events, you know, lots of organizations to which I can be part of and lots of associations. It is upon me that it is on me that how much I want to explore. Darwin has offered me a lot 
it it depends that how much i actually want to take so never feel that you will get bored in darwin because that is not going to happen especially in dry season so these were the 10 things that i really wanted to mention i because everyone keeps on asking that why to choose darwin why not any other you know state or something like that so these this is my take on darwin and the last thing this is just a complimentary thing which may not apply to everyone uh let me just give um uh, like i researched about Darwin for almost one and a half years when I was in India. Like I researched about whole Australia for almost one and a half years. Like to which country should I actually go or maybe to which state should I actually go because I had other options as well. I could have gone to Canada, I could have gone to UK. There will be a video where I will be talking that why didn't I choose Canada? Why didn't I, why didn't I choose Canada and why I decided to move to Australia of course. So one thing why, uh, you know, one thing is like the positive factor about CDU is that CDU is the only university, only university all over Australia that gives you the IELTS exemption. Now, what I, what I, what I basically mean by that is that I'm talking about Masters of Teaching over here. In Masters of Teaching, CDU requires, Charles Darwin University requires seven each in every uh, you know every module, listening, speaking, reading and writing. Though I had more band scores, I'm just mentioning. So so uh, Darwin say CDU requires seven each in every module whereas all the other universities except two three they require 7.5 I also I also know those universities they require 7.5 in two of the modules and then eight eight in other modules and all the other all the other universities around Australia they need eight in speaking eight in listening seven in reading and seven in writing so this was the only university, this is the only university which allows seven each in Masters of Teaching and you will be able to get an admission over here. So I will just end this video over here. Darwin, Northern Territory is actually different from the rest of the Australia. You will not get these vibes anywhere in Australia, I can assure you the vibes that you actually get over here. you know. Basically, uh, it is an experience which is unforgettable. You will not get this experience anywhere. Limitless opportunities it is going to provide you. Yeah. So that's it. This is all I wanted to say for my today's video. If, again, I'll mention, please do your own research before moving to Darwin. Thank you so much for watching this video. And let me know in the comments section what you want to see next. I'll see you soon in my next videos. Thank you.